Good afternoon. My name is Brian Munar, and I am the president and CEO here at Discovery World. And I would like to welcome everyone to today's virtual town hall meeting. And today we're coming to you live from the Ryman Aquarium here at Discovery World. Now, the Ryman Aquarium is one of the hidden gems here at Discovery World. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but it is the largest aquarium in Wisconsin. Now, it's one of my favorite parts of Discovery World. And on any given day, I love to come down and walk through our aquarium tunnel and explore the tropical fish of the Caribbean. And I'd love to come down and see all of the children when they're walking over our clear floors and on, they're on top of our tanks looking down to see many of the organisms from our collection. Now, if you come and visit Discovery World and you visit the aquarium, that you have a chance to get up and close and personal with many of the organisms in our collection. So for example, have you ever touched a sturgeon? Well, you can here at the Ryman Aquarium. They love getting a lot of attention along with our stingrays in our touch tanks. Now, there are many, many different organisms that you'll encounter when you come to visit us here at Discovery World. Everything from our various fish to turtles, axolotls, uh, to snakes, frogs, you name it. There are so many different things you'll encounter and so much to learn while you're here. Now, for today's program, we're going to learn more about the aquarium. We're going to learn about many of the different species that live here. And just a reminder, throughout the program, you can ask us questions. And the best way to do that is to enter them at the Q&A section on the bottom of the screen. And we'll be taking your questions throughout the program. Now, today, I'm joined by two members of our aquarium team we're gonna share a little bit with you about the work that they do and about many of the friends that we have here in uh, the Ryman Aquarium. So first is Brittany. Brittany is our aquarium curator and Brittany joined Discovery World in 2021. And before you were here, you were in Texas, but, um, but you came back to Wisconsin. I did. <laughs> and now you're able to be a little bit closer to family. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. And the second member of our team is one of our aquarists, and this is Danny. And Danny joined our team in 2020. Yes. And before you were on staff, you were actually an intern here in 2018. So you had a chance to right. learn, and you okay. liked it enough that you yeah. wanted to come and work with <laughs> us full time. So uh, Danny's also someone who has the opportunity to dive in our aquarium. So a chance to actually be in the water in our tanks. And I think that's probably one of the really exciting things, right along with, I think, any of us who work here, seeing the young people that we encounter every day and their reactions to all of our exhibits. So for today's program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to the two of you to take a little bit of time to walk through a little bit about your roles and then some of the great and exciting things that we do here at Discovery World in the Ryman Aquarium. Great. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you. So as Brian said, I'm Brittany. I'm the aquarium curator here at Discovery World. Um, as the curator, I do wear a lot of different hats. Um, that can entail me making sure that you know all of our animals are happy, they're well cared for, making sure we have enough food, equipment, things like that. Um, but besides making sure all of our animals are healthy, I always need to make sure you know all of my staff is healthy and happy as well. Um, I also, because I am the curator, my job does take me on my computer a lot. I'm in my office maybe more than I would like to be sometimes. Um, so I do try my best to get down to the aquarium as much as I can, because um, it is the best part of the job, getting to interact with the animals and feed them and dive and things like that. So I do try to split my time as best I can. Hello, my name is Danny. I am one of five aquarists here at Discover World. And as an aquarist, our jobs include anything from taking care of the animals, such as feeding, monitoring their health, to lots and lots of cleaning here. And we do anything from day to day that needs to be done out on the floor, as well as in the back of the aquarium. And pretty much our goal here is to ensure that all of our animals here live the best life that they can. And we're really excited to have you here at the Ryman Aquarium. And Brittany is going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we have here at the Ryman Aquarium. Yeah, so just some fun facts about our aquarium. We are the largest aquarium in Wisconsin. Um, total, we have about 200,000 gallons of water. That includes both fresh water and salt water. 
Our largest exhibit is our freshwater exhibits at Share Lake, Michigan exhibit. Um, it's also our coldest, so it sits around 59 degrees. It is home to all of the fish that you would find in our right, in our, right in our backyard here in Lake Michigan, which is pretty cool. And then our warmest exhibit is our Caribbean walkthrough tunnel exhibit, and that one sits around 84 degrees, so um, a lot warmer than Lake Michigan. Um, because we are in Wisconsin though, you know, landlocked and not near any oceans, we do have to make our own salt water here. So we can't just take it from the ocean. We have to specially order boxes of salt to be able to make salt water for our fish. Um, if we were to weigh all of the salt that we use every year per year, it would roughly equal about eight African elephants. So lots and lots of salt um, goes through our facility. Uh, all that salt total makes us about 315,000 gallons of water. Um, so pretty amazing. Uh, as well as fish here though, we also have lots of different animals as well. So we have about a little over 75 different species of a variety of animals. Um, so as well as fish, like I said, we also have reptiles, amphibians, and vertebrates. Um, so all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and we do have actually some, something coming up um, pretty soon for this year that involves our animals that I will let Danny tell you a little more about. Yes, so in March, we will be bringing back our animal meet and greets slash Aquarius talks. And as a reminder, all of these can be found on the website of Discovery World uh, days that this will be happening and each of the talks and what they, what they will include. And so on Wednesdays, we dive in our Lake Michigan tank. And during those days, uh, we will have someone out talking about how we dive here at Discovery World, uh, talking about the tank itself and actually why we hand feed our sturgeon in the Lake Michigan tank. On Thursdays, we dive in our Caribbean Reef exhibit, and during that time, uh, we'll have someone talking about that tank as a whole and diving as well. And also on that day, we will do a feeding encounter, so you can learn about how we feed that Caribbean Reef exhibit and what they may eat and ask any questions for that. On Fridays, we will have our saltwater and freshwater touch tanks uh, feeding and encounters so you can come out and learn how we feed those tanks what they eat and maybe some more facts about the animals that call them call that place home and on saturdays we will bring back our reptile or amphibian demonstration so we'll bring in out one of our friends here in the aquarium and you can uh, meet that animal and do an encounter with it and ask any questions you have and learn some cool facts that we want to tell you about. And so one of the animals that you may meet on Saturday if you come for the reptile or amphibian demonstration is actually one of our ball pythons, Koya, that is here with Brittany right yeah. now. Yeah, so this is Koya. She is one of our resident ball pythons. We do have two here at Discovery World. They are both females. Um, like I said, Koya, and then the other girl is Anubis. We can tell them apart. Actually, it's pretty cool how we can tell them apart. Um, so on Koya's head, on the top of her head, she actually has a spot on her body that looks like a heart. And then Anubis has one that looks like a teardrop. So that's a good way for us to tell them apart. Um, Koya is also a little bit darker than Anubis is as well. Um, so ball pythons are pretty cool. They are actually native to Africa. So you wouldn't find them here in Wisconsin. Um, they're native to Africa, like I said. Um, they are called ball pythons actually because of their defense mechanism. So when these guys get scared, they are known to put their bodies into tight little balls and tuck their head in the middle of it um, to protect themselves from whatever they may be afraid of or whatever's threatening them. Um, snakes are pretty cool in the way that they eat, actually. Everyone's always curious about how snakes eat. Um, so our girls here do get frozen thawed rats. We feed them about every other week. Snakes do have a very slow metabolism, so they don't need to be fed every single week or every single day like a lot of different animals do. Um, they're able to go about two weeks in between feedings, and that's just fine for them. Um, so as you can see, Koya is kind of slithering around and she's sticking out her tongue. So snakes are pretty cool in the way that they are able to uh, obtain their prey. So Koya has two adaptations that she's able to use. She's able to smell using her tongue. So she will stick her tongue out of her mouth that picks up scent particles in the air and then she's able to put the tongue back in her mouth. And then she actually has a special organ on the roof of her mouth that will be able to tell her what she's smelling. Um, she also has these heat sensing pits around the front of her mouth. They look like kind of like little holes around the front of her face um, and that helps her kind of see and see, I guess, through heat. 
Um, so she is a constrictor, so she would be able to bite onto her prey and wrap around it, like I said, whereas venomous snakes actually got to bite their prey to inject the venom. Um, she's obviously not venomous, otherwise I would not be holding her. Um, so she is one of the really cool reptiles that you can get to meet, like Danny said, if you come to our reptile encounter. Um, we also have two other cute little reptiles that you can meet, and I will let Danny introduce them. Yes. So... Here we have our two resident box turtles, uh, Boop and Beep, and they have uh, sort of become our official mascots of Discovery World. Uh, so we just kind of realized how much everyone loves Boop and Beep, and I mean, you have to admit, they make the cutest graphics uh, <laughs> ever. Uh, so with these two guys, you will find them up in our Great Lakes Future area. They actually just received a new home in our Great Lakes Future area. They actually switched exhibits with our. Uh, they switched exhibits with our tiger salamander Tigger, and so they are in a much bigger home, and they really, really enjoy that. So here we have Beep. She is our ornate box turtle. They get their name from the unique, colorful pattern on their shells. And the really interesting thing about box turtles is they are able to, when they feel threatened to fully enclose themselves into their shell for protection. And uh, beep here, ornate box turtles are actually native to Wisconsin, so you could find them while you're driving around um, on country roads, uh, mostly in like wooded, grassy areas. And, but do be careful as you are driving. Uh, you, humans are actually like the top predator for turtles because of car crashes, you know, hitting them with the car as they're trying to cross over into different territory. And uh, as box turtles, they are considered omnivores, meaning that they like bugs, insects, but also eat vegetables and fruits. And uh, even though they are a little picky, they don't like to eat their vegetables, uh, but they love, they love worms and fruits. Right. Boop here, he, uh, he's the star of the show, and he usually knows it. He's very friendly uh, with the camera, and he is our three-toed box turtle. And they are considered three-toed box turtles, because if you actually look on their back feet here, they only have uh, three toes, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And just like Beep, he can actually um, enclose himself all the way into his shell as well. They are not native to Wisconsin. You'll find them more in southern parts of the U.S., about Missouri or lower. And you'll usually find them by water. Um, and they're most active like right after it rains and in the spring and summer for breeding. And uh, now that we've met a few of the animals that you may see here at the aquarium, we would like to just inform you on some of the new and exciting things that we have coming to the Ryman Aquarium. Yeah, so we have some new and exciting things happening, like Danny said. Um, a couple of new additions to the Great Lakes Future area. So Beep and Boop moved exhibits, as well as our tiger salamander, and we also got some new residents up there. So in one of our terrariums, we now have tree frogs. We have Australian white tree frogs. There's about five of them in there. They are really good at hiding in the plants in their exhibit. So when you come here, you're going to have to keep a close eye and see if you can find them. Uh, we do plan on getting a few more species in there as well, so pretty soon it'll be full of tree frogs. Um, we are also going through a renovation on our coral tank. So where our coral tank used to be next to Caribbean Tunnel, it's still going to be there. However, it's going to look slightly different, um, and we're planning on kind of revamping the way that it looks and just giving it a refresh. Um, we also have lots of new things happening in the aquarium as far as new species, new de tank decorations, yeah. um, things like that. So you'll just have to keep coming visiting us and you can see how things change on your visit every time. And hopefully they're always new and exciting. Yes. <laughs> uh, we would like to welcome Brian back and we are happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right. Well, thank you, Brittany and Danny and Boop, Beep and Koya <laughs> for all that you've done so far today. But uh, again, we're looking for any questions from our audience, and it looks like we may have a few that are starting to come in. So um, our, our first question, um, is, I guess, related to your roles. How did you get started in the field? And if you're a young person who wants to think about a career yeah. path like this, what might be something that you would encourage them to consider? Uh, sure. I guess 
I'll, I can go first on um, how I did it. Um, so I have always kind of just been interested in the water world in general. It was always something I wanted to do ever since I was a little girl. Um, so for me, it was more about just getting involved in high school. It started with any science class that was offered. I was in it. I was taking it. I was doing it. Um, I did a job shadow, actually, at a fish hatchery um, because we are in Wisconsin. We're pretty limited. I'm going to school for marine biology. Everyone kind of looked at me a little bit funny um, because, you know, what do you do here? Um, but I just kind of just got involved as much as I could. So I did the job shadow, and then in college, um, I actually would work in a live collections fish lab um, on campus, and then I did a few internships at different zoos and things like that. Um, so I guess just my advice would be just getting involved as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, anywhere that has exotic animals, things like that, just get involved, just get out there. How about you, Danny? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, on that? Uh, like Brittany said, uh, I was very interested in water growing up and animals in general. I was part of a program called 4-H, uh, which is a great way to get involved with animals. And so when I got into college, I studied uh, biology, took as many animal classes as I could and I did a couple of different internships, uh, one here, as Brian mentioned earlier, and also one more at uh, the Racine Zoo. And just through those two, I just realized that I really enjoyed working with aquatic animals versus uh, terrestrial animals. And uh, so, I mean, Br Brittany said it pretty well. Like, if you are interested in any of that, just experience is great and get involved in wherever you can. So it sounds like get involved and keep learning. Yes. And even <laughs> yeah. if you go into this field, you'll always be you learning. You'll always learn, be learning yes. constantly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have another question. I think this is one um, that I, I, I'm going to guess you get all the time. But what's your favorite animal in the aquarium and why? <laughs> yeah, we do get asked that uh, quite often. And uh, I think it's like if you ask, you know, any parent of who's your favorite child, it's sometimes really hard to pick and you don't want to. Or to be honest about that. Uh, <laughs> but one of my personal favorites is um, our northern pike that is in our Lake Michigan exhibit. His name is actually Bruce. So if you come through, uh, say what up to Bruce. And he usually <laughs> hangs out in like the top of the exhibit. And uh, he's really cool because he's very, very fast. Um, so when he eats, uh, he will snatch up anything really, really quickly. Brittany, do you have a favorite? Um, I'm not going to pick a favorite. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to say I really like our stingrays. Um, stingrays and sharks kind of have a soft spot um, for me. Um, of course, our little Susie Q and Caribbean, our Kano's in there. I do love her. And then I love our stingrays and our touch stick behind me as well. So I would say the stingrays. <laughs> All right. Um, Another one, it sounds like people are very interested in learning about your jobs. What's your favorite part of the job? Uh, my favorite part of the job, I would say, is definitely uh, the diving um, aspect of the job. Uh, so we do get into four of our, actually five of our tanks here. Um, and that may include the scrubbing, uh, feeding the fish, um, and just some overall maintenance and cleaning on the tank itself. Uh, but beyond that, it definitely is just interacting with the animals and, you know, caring for those animals. My answer is very similar to <laughs> Um, I just love interacting with animals. I mean, who doesn't want to come to work and get to play with animals all day? So just living the dream. Yeah. All right. That's great. That's great. Um, uh, our next question um, is related to when people come to visit the Ryman Aquarium. Is there something that you think is a must see when they visit here or something that maybe they wouldn't know about otherwise that you think that uh, that we should draw their attention to? Uh, well, if people have never been here before, one of the big favorites is walking through the Caribbean Reef Tunnel. Uh, people really enjoy looking up, looking down, looking to the side of them and seeing fish uh, wherever they may look. Um, but other than that, um, I would say definitely checking out our Weird and Wild exhibit. Uh, it's kind of at like, the bottom of our aquarium, and some people may miss it, but we have lots of interesting uh, creatures that live down there. What's one of those interesting creatures you'd recommend they stop and check? Uh, well, one that uh, all kids know if you play Minecraft is axolotls. <laughs> uh, it's really interesting, you know, being down there and kids come up and they know exactly how to pronounce the name and they probably know more about axolotls than honestly I do. Uh, they love axolotls, but um, I would say probably uh, or the poison dark frog. He's really cool as well. Is there a must-do from your perspective? 
Um, I was actually going to say what Danny said was weird and wild. I think a lot of those animals are really unique, and you don't really see them a whole lot in different aquariums, especially the axolotls. Um, they are actually an endangered species, so it is really special for us to house them here and be able to show them to the public. So. Great. Well, I guess we have time for one last question. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, one that I think uh, I can answer a little bit, but I'll also ask you to, to help me out too. But um, the question is, how can I help the aquarium? And uh, one of the things that I would say is come and visit. Um, one of the best ways to support an organization like Discovery World is to come and participate with us. So I would encourage everyone to come and visit Discovery World. And for those of you that are members, thank you for being members, and we hope that you will renew and continue that relationship. But if you're not a member, maybe you would consider joining the organization um, and becoming a member and really using that as a way to deepen the experience. But in terms of helping the aquarium, is there a way that people might be able to get directly involved? Yeah, we actually have a couple different options for um, guests and members of the public to help us out. Um, so we actually do offer an aquarist assistance role. Um, that is where you would actually come in and you work side by side with aquarists. So things like cleaning filters and feeding animals and just kind of helping us out on our daily routine. Um, just being a, an extra involved volunteer, essentially. Um, we also have opportunities for members of the public to come and dive for us. Um, we have to be scuba certified, of course, to do that, at least 18 years of age as well. Um, we do allow lots of members of the public to come in. We have a, a big volunteer dive program. Um, they come in and they're able to get in our tanks and help us scrub and feed the animals and all sorts of fun stuff. So, so I would say we definitely would not be able to function fully uh, without our wonderful volunteers that yep. we do have um, able to come in and help out. Uh, so. We appreciate them <laughs> very, very much. So they definitely make our days run a lot smoother sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, it looks like we have one last question. So thank you for everybody who's continuing to post those. Um, do you ever get to stay in the museum overnight to watch over sick or a new resident? So do you ever have to stay here around the clock to take care of one of our friends? We haven't yet, but Knock that may be yeah. in our future. Uh, Brittany can touch on that. Um, but uh, when we do have sick or new residents to the aquarium, they are put through a quarantine process, which is about a 28-day process where we do watch them closely on their behavior, their feeding habits and ensure that they are not sick before we put them in with their new residents. Um, but coming up, we may have to stay over yeah. because uh, we are working through just figuring out where our power comes from and uh, just practicing if there were to be an uh, extreme mishap here with the power, what is going to be on the backup generator. Um, so we may be having a sleep over that night. Yeah. So that's for some precautionary measures. Yeah. Precaution, yes. Yeah. yes. yes. And, and I would say also during the pandemic when we were closed, our aquarium team, they were considered essential employees. So while most of the world was sort of locked down at home, yeah. you and your team we had to be amongst <laughs> the people who had to go out into the world and put yourself at risk to be able to help make sure we could care yeah. for all of our animals. Yeah. So thank you for a, that. An interesting time, you yes. know, starting uh, during COVID, uh, being one of the few people here um, and uh, definitely got to know the animals very well <laughs> and it was very interesting once the doors opened back up and we let people back in. But I think that's what makes this place so special is seeing how much people appreciate being here and the excitement that comes along with that. All right. Well, I, again, I'd like to thank both of you. I'd like to thank our aquarium <laughs> friends. Um, I'd like to thank everyone at home who joined us today. Um, we uh, are, are really happy to have you join us at these virtual town hall meetings. We hope you'll come and visit us uh, here at the beautiful Ryman Aquarium. Um, it is one of the gems here at Discovery World, and if you've not had a chance to experience it, please do come and check it out. Um, we will be hosting a, another uh, town hall meeting in March, so please stay tuned for more information about that. And we look forward to uh, having you join us here online and every day here at Discovery World. Thank you very much. Have a great day.